Carrie Ann Gidden, Amos chapter 8, verse 9, and Isaiah 26 chapter, verse 20 through 21, has been fulfilled. Carrie Ann, are you sure you're not from Missouri? The show me state. Here it is. I will show you from the Bible. Carrie Ann says darkness is coming on the earth. She then quotes Amos chapter 8 verses 9. She says the Most High Yah declare that he's going to darken the earth on a clear midday at noon. So, you know, everybody know that this darkness is happening in Texas. Brothers and sisters, this darkness that is happening, there is a darkness that is coming, and you know what, what I'm going to say. It is about the three days of darkness. This is coming. Many brothers and sisters do not believe in it. They don't believe it's going to happen. But brothers and sisters, I am telling you from a biblical standpoint in Amos, Amos chapter 8, verses 9 and 10, where the Most High Yah declares that he's going to darken the earth, right? On a clear midday, or, well, not mid, but noon. That's what time noon is for the Lord. We don't know what time his noon is. Carrie Ann says the scripture, Amos 8 and 9, is speaking about the three days of darkness. Even though the words three days are not mentioned in the text at all. People, let's hear what the scripture has to say about the prophetic words found in Amos chapter 8 verse 9 which has been fulfilled. Listen up Carrie Ann. The Bible says, in the book of Amos chapter 8, verse 9, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. The Bible says, in the book of Mark 15 chapter verse 33 and when the sixth hour was come there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour in the book of Mark 15 chapter verse 33 from the sixth hour refers to noon and until the ninth hour refers to 3 p.m. The Bible says, Likewise also the chief priests, mocking, saying among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. And when the sixth hour, noon, was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, 3 p.m., Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbathani, which is being interpreted, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So the prophetic words in the book of Amos chapter 8 verse 9 saying that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in the clear day was fulfilled in the book of Mark 15 chapter verse 33. For the sun went down at noon. And Satan sung, Don't let the sun go down on me, For I'll lose my king.
kingdom and all that I believe. <laughs> so the book of Amos, the eighth chapter, verse nine, is not referring to the three days of darkness, Carrie Ann, but the fulfilled prophecy of the crucifixion of Yahshua the Christ. One down and one to go. Carrie Ann goes on to say that Isaiah, the 26th chapter, verse 20 through 21, is referring to the three days of darkness too. Even though, once again, the words three days does not appear in the text at all. And also Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah. We can find it quickly, brothers and sisters. I won't be long because I don't want this video to be long. Because really and truly, it's about... It's a pre-shadow of what's going on in Texas. I just wanted to draw your attention to, really. But I think it's Isaiah. Where is it gone? Isaiah, where is Isaiah? Isaiah 26. I think it's Isaiah 26 verses. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus, we love you, Lord. Watch this. The Lord punishes. The iniquity. This is what I'm saying. This darkness that is coming is the wrath of Yah. It's a punishment upon the world. Watch this. Isaiah 26 verses 20 and 21. Come my people. Enter thou into thy chambers. Chambers mean your houses. Okay. Watch this. And shut, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself. When I talk about the three days of darkness, and I said to brothers and sisters, listen, when this thing come, make sure that you've got your, your windows are covered up. Don't look outside your windows. Don't be opening up your doors to familiar voices that's going to come and be knocking and all that. Bible is telling you hide yourself so when i said you should hide people said oh we're christians we do not hide we do not have fear well the bible is telling you not me the word of yah is telling you what to do when this thing happens the bible says in the book of isaiah the 26th chapter verses 20 through 21 Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. When the scripture says, hide thyself as it were for a little moment, according to the Strong's Concordance, the original Hebrew meaning for the words little moment is a wink of the eye. Suddenly, instant, a very short space of time, and not three days, as Carrie Ann has said. People, three days is a complete 72 hours, and this is not a short space of time, according to the Strong's Concordance. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment. Yes, because the three days is for three days is for a short period of time. It is for a little moment. And so what the Lord is saying, when this thing comes, you must go inside your house and hide. There is a huge difference in time between a wink of the eye and three days, 72 hours. 
the scripture says, Hide thyself, as if it were for a little moment. Carrie Ann said, Tell me where in the word of Yah, if you can show me in the Bible where it is recorded that people went and hid themselves. She said, if you can tell me, brothers and sisters, in the comment section where people went and hid themselves. Tell me where in the word of Yah, if you can show me in the Bible, hallelujah, we're not talking Exodus because that Moses thing happened way before Isaiah. Show me where in the Bible, where it is recorded that people hide themselves. This hasn't come through yet. This is prophetic. This scripture is going to come to pass. Because if you search scripture, there's nowhere in the Bible. Nowhere apart from Exodus, which Exodus has nothing to do with Isaiah because Isaiah is not talking about the ancient Egyptian, sorry, the ancient Israelite because those of so them passing gone and the three days of darkness already happened. So Isaiah is talking about an event. Carrie Ann, I will tell you where people shut themselves up in their chambers and hid. I will show you where it is recorded. Afterwards, obey the word and renounce that false three days of darkness doctrine. Carrie Ann said, this scripture, hide thyself as if it were for a little moment, has not come through yet. Show me where in the Bible where it is recorded that people hide themselves. This hasn't come through yet. This is prophetic. Carrie Ann, not only has this scripture come through, but it has repeated itself over and over again. The Bible says, And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Again, the Bible says, Behold, when we come unto the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. Again, Jesus said, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Again, the Bible says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, Greek meaning chamber, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to thy father which is in secret, 
and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chamber, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. To enter into a door, a house, a chamber, is to enter into safety until the wrath and anger of the Lord has passed. To enter into a door, a house, a chamber, is something that the Most High used for His people when judgment was coming. As seen with the children of Israel putting blood on their doorposts, and entering into their house slash chamber, shutting themselves in for safety, until the death angel passed by. As seen with prayer, entering into your door slash chamber, shutting yourself in, praying to the Most High in times of trouble and blessings. As seen with Rahab the harlot, being told to enter her house slash chamber with her family and shutting themselves in until the children of Israel completely destroyed Jericho. As seen with Yahshua, Jesus said, I am the door by me if any man enter in, receiving Christ as their Savior, he shall be saved from the wrath of God that is to come on the disobedience. So there you go, Carrie Ann. People have been entering into doors, chambers, shutting themselves up, hiding themselves from the wrath of God forever. Carrie Ann goes on to say when the scripture says, until the indignation be overpassed. She says, watch this. This is what the Lord calls the three days of darkness. Have thyself as it were for a little moment until, watch this. This is what the Lord calls the three days of darkness. Until the indignation, the indignation overpassed. No, Carrie Ann, this is what you call the three days of darkness. The Bible doesn't say that at all. Carrie Ann is working witchcraft right in front of you. People, according to the Strong's Concordance, the original Hebrew meaning for the word indignation is to froth at the mouth. Fury, anger. So according to the Strong's Concordance, indignation does not mean three days, as Carrie Ann has said. And this is quite evident. But the word indignation means anger, wrath. As in God's anger with the Egyptians, the battle for the land of Jericho for Israel, the death of the firstborn, the Passover. Isaiah 26 verse 20 through 21 has absolutely nothing to do with the three days of darkness, but rather a message to the children of Israel. Carrie Ann says the Lord gave her another vision showing her that the three days of darkness is going to happen 150%. She says that it is going to happen the month of April, starting at 1030 in the morning, but the Lord did not give her the year. Carrie Ann says, 
So if it does not happen this April, look forward to next April and so on. People, come on, give me a Kit Kat break. Carrie Ann, with all her white, is a false prophetess and is leading many to hell. This second three days of darkness is not biblical and I have proven that scripturally. The three days of darkness happened only once in the book of Exodus chapter 10 verse 21 through 23 and this is evident. Now you may ask yourself why does Carrie Ann wants an individual to believe in this fake, false, three days of darkness doctrine? Because it is doctrines of demons, plain and simple, and Carrie Ann is a big devil. Allow me to reveal to you the spiritual implication behind one receiving, embracing, accepting and believing doctrines of demons. When you receive doctrines of demons as truth, you open a portal, a door, a gateway for demons. And unfortunately, when that door is open, you do not get to say which demon can and will come through. Carrie Ann is aware of this and wants her subscribers open to this demonic attack. This is why she has you believing in lighting white candles, putting black plastic bags on your windows, spraying Listerine on the Nephilims, putting wax into your ears, and more. All which cannot be supported by the Word of God. The Bible says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Black plastic bags, lighting white candles, spraying Listerine on demons, putting earwax into your ears is completely carnal. Not only is this teaching demonic, but it is completely exalted against the knowledge of God. People, wake up to Carrie Ann. Carrie Ann? So at this point in the video with receipts I have provided you, I'm going to give you a full refund on your doctrines of demons. Carrie Ann, if you find yourself rejecting this message, let it be known that it is not me that you reject, but the Most High. Carrie Ann, I do these videos out of obedience to the Most High. Now, whether you accept them or not is really not that important. But what is important is that I am obedient to the Most High, and so I sound the alarm of coming judgment. Carrie Ann, your blood is off my hands. You have been warned. I highly suggest that you repent while there is still time. You might as well call Carrie Ann Humpty Dumpty because she is about to have a great fall. Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty, Humpty Dumpty. Put 
Carrie Ann, judgment is coming for you. Set your house in order. I suggest you repent. Yeshua love you. Be blessed.